Will a one-bladed propeller work on the Hawk 3D? Well, back when we were younger kids, about 55 years ago, we couldn't afford new props when we broke them. We used to take the two broken props, cut the notch in the middle with the hole intact, balance them, and put them back together and fly again. I don't ever remember any failures with them either. Well, back in the 70s, I met Frank Johnson, who showed me plenty of one-bladed props that he used to race with. It seemed incredible to me, but the theory's not bad. Frank said that with a two-bladed prop, the first blade cuts and pushes the air, and the second blade runs into the interference and turbulence, and it's not as efficient. Well, that sounds logical. He also said when you do that, you need to make the blade a little bit longer than the stock blade to still push the equal amount of air. Well, that makes sense, too. So when Jeff broke his Nitroplane's Hawk 3D prop, I gave him my spare and I decided to try that one bladed prop scenario again for fun and nostalgia. I have plenty of prop experience and caution you that unless you really know what you're doing, don't attempt to do this yourself. The video simply is made to process the theory in the brain, then apply a practical application to see if it works. It's a good experience. Here's how I did it. Folks, typically uh, with a two bladed prop, they're spinning around, one blade creates some turbulence and the other blade runs into it. It's not entirely 100% efficient, but it does work pretty good. So if you're going to go to a single bladed prop, this is the stock prop right here. I'm going to just show how it works. Go to a single bladed prop, you don't run into any interference. However, the prop normally would be a little bit longer as in the version that I've made here with a little more pitch and a little wider. We're going to try the two and see how they fly. First, just if you broke the prop, this is the way I did it with carbon fiber and weight. And what I did was I put a, uh, a counterweight on here, carbon fiber rod, drilled it out, uh, made sure that's in tight, don't worry. There's Allen screw on both sides. Okay, this is the way the other one goes on. I used a different, an adapter, not exactly the right size, why it's not quite as smooth. And uh, this is the way the stock one goes on. Just tighten these screws down here on the side to hold it down. And it's far less chance of breaking than those rubber bands. Let's see how it, how it spins up here. Oh boy, that's, that's, that's nice. They're not even doing anything, so I'm pretty sure we're going to have no problem flying. It's not going to be as fast as before, but it's going to fly okay. That's nice. One bladed prop. Here I've taken carbon fiber rod and a weight on there and uh, drilled it out as you saw from the still pictures. And I'll show you how efficient it is now. Let's give it a shot. It's breezy out here today. One bladed prop balanced. There's no interference with the other blade, so it should be pretty smooth. I'm starting with the stock size prop just to set a reference point, know where to work from there. Dusty wind, getting worse and worse by the second here. 
But the one bladed prop seems to be holding it pretty good. All right, let's try the, let's try the bigger prop now and see how that goes. More pitch prop, much bigger than the other one. And uh, a different hub on here. Doesn't exactly fit straight, but it's what I had just for this experiment. So let's see how this one goes. Whoa, that sucker goes. Holy cow. Push rods rattle a little bit, so I'm going to put a rubber band damper on him and see if I can flatten him down. There's a lot to be said for one-bladed props. I don't recommend anything. It's just something that I did to experiment. If you're going to do stuff like this, make sure you're very careful. Put it together good. Hey, maybe they could make props cheaper for us. Only one blade. <laughs> 